In this tutorial, we're going to cover the other options of the shape tool. And within the options, I'm talking about the gearbox icon. In the gearbox icon, there's a number of options you can use, like unconstrained, square, fixed size, proportional, and from center, when we're considering the rectangle tool. Um, right now, I have the unconstrained option. What the unconstrained option does is that it allows you to manipulate the rectangle in any dimension possible, whether you want the width to be a lot smaller or wider, or the height to be larger or smaller or narrow, you are able to do that. But if you choose the other option of square, you're only able to drag out squares whenever you use your mouse key to create this shape. Whatever you do, it will always be a shape. You can make it bigger, you can make the square bigger, but you can never manipulate it into a rectangle. Now the fixed size option um, allows you to create whatever fixed size you want, whatever dimension you want of the rectangle you can. Right now I have 150 pixels for width and 170 pixels for height. So when I click and drag, it will automatically create the shape and now I can position it anywhere I want and I can just continue to do this. Um, and if I want to change it, all I have to do is put like the width by 200 pixels and maybe the height by 150 pixels and click enter. And then I'll create a new uh, fixed size for the rectangle, as you see here. Now the other option is proportional. Now right now it's two to one. So that basically means that for the height, the width is going to be two times the size of the height. And if I wanted to put it by one, one to one, it means it's going to create just a proportional uh, rectangle, which is going to be a square. But let's go back and put it to two to one. When I put it by two to one, since I said the width is going to be two times longer than the height, it will always create that type of proportion, whatever, whatever shape I draw next to it. And the last option within the rectangle shape is from center. And you can use this with any other option, but what it does, it allows you to drag from the center area instead of just dragging from an angle. So right now it's just going to drag in the center that I could, uh, originally clicked on and it will position itself there as opposed to me just dragging from an angle to the other opposite edge or something like that. You see what I'm saying? All right, so let's show the other options of the shape tool. Right now, we're going to go into the rounded rectangle tool. And the round rectangle tool, they still have the same options, unconstrained, square, fixed size, proportional from center. But the difference is they have a radius um, option. The radius option is, um, basically entails that the lower the amount of radius, the more it's going to have a sharper angle, like a square. So if I make the radius zero pixels and then create a shape, it's just going to be a rectangle, right? It's just going to create rectangles. But if I put it by 10 pixels, it's going to make the radius rounder, or it's going to make the angles rounder, I'm sorry. So when I start to draw the shape, you start to automatically see the difference in the amount of roundness in the rectangles. Um, so you'll see it like that. I can also put it by 45, boom, click enter or hit enter. As you see here, the angles are a lot more rounder when you try to drag out the shape. And let's put it by 90 degrees. I mean, not 90 degrees, 90 pixels. And it's going to be even more rounder. In some instances, it looks just like a perfect circle, as you see here. So this is the, those are the differences. Um, you see the different options, and you can all use from center and do that. Um, but we're going to go into the next uh, shape, which is the ellipse tool. Let me just remove these shapes for your shapes and delete them. And let's change the color to maybe a purple or something, purplish blue. Let's look at the options. Now everything is pretty similar except circle, but circle is pretty much similar to the square um, option that they had for the rectangle tool. Uh, like I said before, with unconstrained, you can manipulate the whatever shape to have the height increased or the width wider or make it more narrow, whatever you choose. But with this option, the new option, technically new option, which is the circle icon, 
you're just going to watch perfect proportional circles however you want you could also tick on the from center and create circles from the center that you originally clicked on as you see here boom 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 just to re uh, recap with the proportional you can make the height three i have right now i have the width at one and the height at three so it's the the height is going to be three times as big as the width when i click and drag or i can make it proportional by making the width one hitting enter and then doing that again and since it's from center it's going to drag out perfectly from the center i originally pointed at uh let's delete these and go to the next type of shape which is the polygon tool now in the last tutorial i talked about the sides the sides uh right now if i just click and drag let me change the color uh use this color boom right now it's just going to draw a perfect pentagon even though it's not really symmetrical right now but it draws a point perfect pentagon and i could change the size by adding nine sides and creating this type of polygon a nine-sided polygon now with the options here it's a little bit different um you can create smooth corners if you click on this option box so when i draw out this nine-sided polygon it's less smoother which is, makes it just a perfect circle um or i could turn it to a star let me take it take off the smooth corners and show the just the star option first the star option you see here it's somewhat like a star but i think the indentation oh yeah there's the option of smooth indents that's ticked off and if i take that off it's going to have a star ish type of shape let's actually put it by the actual coordinates or the actual size of a star which is usually five sides and then do it and there you go you have a perfect star um and like you saw before uh you can smooth the indents and make it look like this but with the five size star it's going to look like this sort of like a starfish or something like that um now with the smooth corners let's take out the smooth indents um you're going to see a more a bloated look of the star as you see here uh and with the indents by sides it's going to bring in the sides closer to the center and you'll see that when I push it by 70%. Um, as you see here, there's a difference between how it looks like from this to now. And as you increase the sides, um, the indentation sides, it will continue to push the sides into the center. And if you reduce them, let's reduce them to 30%, click enter. It's going to look a little bit more bloated. A more bloated looking star so that looks cool uh let's take that off and delete them and then go to the next option which is the line tool all right with the line tool there's a different options there's a start and end arrow points uh i believe um i believe the width was originally at 500 percent so let me try to make them at the default settings and I think the concavity was by zero. So let's end that and put the start point. Now you see here that the start option of the arrowhead is going is ticked. So you're going to see an arrowhead when you create the line. Now you can take it off and just have a perfect line. But if you want an arrowhead, you can click on the start or the end or put both and it will create two arrowheads when you create the line. Now with the width at 500, um, if you increase the width size, you'll actually increase the width size to the arrowhead. So as you see the arrowhead now, and now you'll see the arrowhead when I create another one, you'll slightly see that the arrowheads have become larger, technically in height, but it's technically the width of the arrowhead that got bigger. Um, Lengthwise, uh, it also affects the arrowhead. So if I reduce the length to 800 and put the width to 500 like it originally was, the length has been diminutive, has been reduced. When you compare it to the original one where it was by 1,000, the length of the arrowhead is a little bit smaller. 
Um, and the concavity, the other option, the concavity actually pushes in where uh, the connection or the angles where the arrowhead and the line connect and is going to push it in to uh, the center. So if I put the concavity by 25 pixels, uh, I mean 25% and click enter, you'll easily see that the angles where the line and the arrowhead connect are going to be pushed into the center. And as I increase the concavity, it's going to create that concave even more. Uh, let's put it by 50 and you'll see an even bigger difference. Boom. Now, if you want to change the weight of the line, you can. All right, now I have it by 10 pixels. Maybe I want to put it by five. Hit enter and you'll see the difference in the line or the weight of the line. And there's just one more shape that I had to go over, which is the custom shape. Um, and let's go to custom shape tool right here. Custom shape tool. There's options of unconstrained. This is pretty much the same like you've seen in all the rest of the shapes I've showed you. Unconstrained, defined proportion, defined size, fixed size, and from center. Unconstrained, you could put it, manipulate the whatever shape that you had originally into a, a height that's, you know, out of control or to a width that's very narrow or you can have defined proportions and create a perfect custom shape um, define size you create a size of uh, wherever you want I guess you pull up this option box and you can define the size of wherever you want let's put it by 150 by 150 Ooh, 150 by 150 And click OK and there you go and you can create a fixed size as well and you also could do from center so those are all the options you can use when you wanted to use the options of uh, the gearbox and that's all there is to this tutorial